Hey guys, crazy day it's been so far. Did not think my day was gonna start like this. So today is Monday, June 5th, five days till my birthday. My last five days of being in my 20s. Uh, technically my birthday week, I guess. It's Monday, my birthday's on Saturday. Anyway, today is Anthony's first day on his paternity leave, his second batch of paternity leave. If you've seen my previous videos and you know that his company gave him six weeks of paternity leave and you could split it up once. So he did three weeks when Avery was born back in April and yeah, back in like end of March and then all of April. And now he has taken his second batch and he's basically just taking all of June off except for I think like the last week. So today's day one of Anthony being off of work. This morning I had to go into the office and work with my sister. I do some work for my family business, so my sister and I were working. If you saw my video, I, don't, I think it's maybe my last video, I was talking about how all of a sudden I had a revelation that I think that Avery's bottle troubles are tied to a lip or tongue tie. None of my boys have had any sort of lip or tongue tie before. I have heard the term tongue tie. I've seen people on Instagram talk about it, but never really experienced it myself. But I have been noticing now that Avery's two months, she's had a very shallow latch, hiccups all the time. When she nurses off of me, she is makes like a clicking sound, like she can't get a proper latch on me and she will not take bottle or pacifier and that was so weird because both my boys took bottles no problem and we've tried six or seven different bottles now we've tried tommy tippy ma'am nook boon even flow that was the newest one we did the even flow we've tried them all and all of them she did not like she would gag on it and couldn't even like latch onto it which was so weird so all of a sudden last friday i kind of had like this revelation like what if it's something in her mouth affecting the way that she takes a bottle so i was looking in her mouth and we've always known that she's had some sort of tongue tie the pediatrician noticed it right off the bat we've noticed it because it like makes her tongue have like a fork in it kind of but when the pediatrician saw it he was like oh it doesn't look to be that severe if it's causing you pain while she's feeding let me know and i can like we can refer you somewhere so i always had that in the back of my mind but like nursing avery it hasn't hurt too much my nipples always are sore which is different from when the boys were because it's like you always have that initial pain but then after a, a couple weeks then usually your breasts are have hardened up and so it doesn't hurt anymore but with avery like i'm two months in and like it doesn't hurt too much but it's like always a sensitivity around my nipples which is totally different from when the boys were so I started looking in Avery's mouth last Friday and I realized I, what I think was a huge lip tie on her upper lip connecting like down to her gums. It looked like it went the whole way down. I was like, I don't think it's supposed to look like that. But how would I know? Like I've never, I've never had a kid with a lip or tongue tie. So I wasn't sure if like that was a thing or not. And if I was like just going crazy. And then I looked online and the dentist that my kids go to, well, it's just Grayson right now. I'm going to start sending Porter there once he turns three. But the dentist that my kids go to, they also treat lip and tongue ties. So I looked on their website and they had a whole like list of criteria on this. Like if you're experiencing this, your baby might have a lip or tongue tie. And I was going down that list and we checked off the boxes on so many of the things. It was like, does your baby get hiccups a lot? Yes. Does your baby get gassy a lot? Yes. Does your baby have a poor shallow latch? Yes. Is there a clicking sound when your baby feeds? Yes. Does your baby have trouble taking a bottle or a pacifier? Yes. So many things that we hit. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is kind of validating that maybe Avery does have something wrong in her mouth. So I was like, it can't hurt just to check it out. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But if I'm right, then maybe I'm, you know, helping her. I guess I was doing some research and it was saying, in certain cases, I don't think all cases, but in certain cases, if you don't get the lip or tongue tie 
fixed, then your child could have speech problems later on because it affects your mouth and the way that you can move your lips and things like that. So it was definitely worth looking into. So I called the dentist office and wanted to get an appointment for Avery. And they were like, oh, we're so booked. So the first appointment that they could give me was June 21st, which was like three weeks from when I wanted to do it, but I didn't have any other choice. So I just accepted it. And then they also put me on a wait list and they were like, if anybody cancels, we'll move you up and we'll call you. And I was like, okay, great. They were closed over in the weekend. This morning is Monday. I got a call at like 9.03 and they were like, hey, we had a cancellation. We can move you up to next week, next Tuesday, like the 14th or whatever, and we can get her in then. And I was like, great, perfect, that's even better. So I only have to wait like a week of her with this possible lip tongue tie, whatever. I had that, I was feeling good about that. Then I went into work, I was working with my sister, we're working on a presentation, and then all of a sudden I get a call again from the dentist office. So I pick up and they were like, hey, don't know if you can make this, but we had a last minute cancellation. Can you be here in an hour? We can see her. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So I hung up with them, told my sister, sorry, I gotta go, I'll be back, and ran out of there with Avery and went to this dentist appointment. Thankfully, Anthony is on paternity leave so that he could stay home with the kids and watch them and be there so I didn't have to worry about like picking them up or anything like that. Took Avery to this dentist office. You guys, we were there for two hours. Oh my gosh, it took so long. First, I had to fill out all the new patient paperwork, which was like 10 pages of paperwork, which was crazy. Mostly crazy because all this information they mostly had, except for like Avery's personal information, but like they had me write down like my name, Anthony's name, date of birth, jobs, like they already had all that in our in their system. But anyway, I had to fill it all out. They got us in a room. Getting Avery's tongue tie with that. Okay, Avery. She's not happy to be here. And then I had to wait forever for the doctor to come in because she's the one that had to look at it. And of course, she's doing exams. She's probably doing teeth fillings, extractions, whatever. She's doing her own thing. So we had to wait forever for her to come. Finally, she came in. They went over like the symptoms that I had been experiencing. And we're like, okay, let's go take a look. So they just did an exam. Basically, like we touched knees and then I had her head laying on the doctor's lap and then her feet were laying on my lap. And the doctor looked around and they like took pictures of Avery's mouth. And I'll show you guys what the pictures look like because I was kind of shocked. Okay, if you don't like looking at mouse and skip ahead. But here are the pictures that they took of Avery. So this is her top lip. You can see this is her nose. This is her top lip. Look at this lip tie. It was all the way down at the gum line. It was so thick. This is this is the one that I noticed on Friday all of a sudden. Like, oh my gosh, that looks super thick and super bad. Yeah, it's supposed to be like way up there. It was way down here. And she said that it was actually like pulling on the bone. And that's why it was kind of making like that indent, like an M shape. And she was saying over time that that would like really strain on the bone. And then all white there, it's because like it was not, it was so much tension on the bone. Then this is her tongue tie. This is what we noticed too. And you can see it's like right, it was tied right at the top of her, at the tip of her tongue. And so it was pulling so much on her tongue. Then she had two cheek ties. She had one here too, but the doctor was like, oh, that one's not too bad. But she had two cheek ties, which I would have never found if they didn't do that. So yeah, they were showing that as well. So looking at those, they were like, yeah, you were definitely right to come in here. She definitely has several lip, tongue, and cheek ties that we can take care of for you today. Didn't even know cheek ties were a thing, but I guess they were telling me that there's like six or seven different areas of the mouth that your baby could have ties on. And Avery had quite a few, poor thing. And they were like, does she gag and choke a lot? 
uh, like when you're feeding her? And I'm like, yes, all the time. And they were like, well, that would make sense because her tongue tie was so tight. She couldn't like move her tongue. And so the milk would just get stuck and then she'd choke on it. And they were like, does your baby's tongue, is it always like white after you feed her? And I'm like, yes, it's always white. And they were like, yeah, because the tongue is so tied down to the bottom of her mouth. She can't like scrape it against like the roof of her mouth to like clean it off. So it just felt so good to me to be validated that like my mom intuition was right and that I was right in taking her to this and like following this crazy wormhole of I think my baby might have a, a tongue tie and then turns out she had a ton. They were like, we can take care of this right now for you or if you wanna think about it, you can come back. We can do it another time. Like it's totally up to, do, to you. But I was like, no, I wanna get it done now because this is obviously affecting her. It's affecting feeding. And maybe once we get this all taken care of, maybe she can actually start taking a bottle. There's the laser. She's got three different areas we're gonna get, huh? Not fun. Okay, taken care of. They explained the procedure to me. They used a laser to cut her ties off. Very high tech now. I don't know how they used to do it in the past, but it was cool that they used the laser. And it was actually the same laser that they used to um, get Grayson's cavities out when he had to get cavities done. Uh, they said the procedure would take about less than five minutes, probably two minutes. I could be in the room or I could go outside of the room. I chose to stay in the room. Basically what they did is they put her in a swaddle so that she couldn't like flail around and like move her arms and legs and stuff. They put on these um, goggles to like protect her eyes from the laser. So I took a picture of her with the goggles on. You have to all input that here. They had me wear eyeglasses to protect my eyes and they were wearing it as well. And basically it just took them about two minutes and they just lasered off all the different positions. Avery did not like it, of course. They said it feels like when you're out in the sun and like you kind of feel like that hot feeling on your skin if it's like super sunny. They said it just feels like that. It doesn't really hurt too much, but it's uncomfortable. Avery definitely, yeah, did not like it. She was sad for the appointment. And then afterwards, you can definitely tell like she kept moving her tongue around and like it was starting to get a little swollen, poor thing, and trying to understand like what was going on. So I felt bad for her there, but I know in the long run, like it will be beneficial for her. They didn't have to numb her. They didn't have to put her to sleep. They say babies recover really well from this procedure. So they didn't have to do anything like that. They literally just took her, did it, and then it was done. They gave me um, Tylenol to give her, so I have to give her Tylenol every six hours for the first 24 hours, and then just see how her pain is after that. They also gave me coconut oil. I guess that helps with pain and then swelling, and they said to put it in the fridge and then put it on the sites um, every so often, so I have that cooling in the fridge. And then the big thing is I have to do stretches with her three times a day for at least three weeks because if you don't do the stretches then it will start to reattach and grow back and that is obviously what you don't want so they showed me a video on how to do the stretches i have to do one for each area that they cut so the lip the cheek and then the tongue and it's just basically like lifting up the lip rubbing where it was attached moving it back and forth then moving the cheek, rubbing it, same with the tongue, things like that. So yeah, I have to do that. They wanna see us back in a week. So we go back next Wednesday. They're gonna check her, see how she's doing, check to make sure it's not reattaching, things like that. And then they want me to get in touch with a lactation consultant just so that we can make sure that she's latching correctly and getting a deep full latch. So I need to call like the hospital where I, had Avery and um, see if I can meet with a lactation consultant about that. I've never done that before. I mean, lactation consultants go around when you're in the hospital after you first have the baby. So I've met with them there, but I've never like met with a consultant outside of the hospital. So this will be interesting, but whatever needs to be done, I will do. 
Um, they said basically after this procedure, she kind of has a new mouth. So she has to get used to how do I feed again and how do I work all these pieces now? So it was a whirlwind of a day. Did not think my day was going to go like this. We got home. I gave her the medicine and now she's sleeping. She's been sleeping. Poor thing recovering i just went and checked on her and she's okay anthony went and took the boys to the park because they've just been sitting around all day and they wanted to get some fresh air it's actually a beautiful day outside it's like mid 70s so pretty and then hopefully we'll join them i'm not sure it's really how avery's feeling she was getting pretty swollen before i put her down so we'll have to see how she's doing maybe i'll put some coconut oil on her um, incisions in her mouth and I need to start doing her stretches tonight, this afternoon, I guess. They say you could do it like before every feeding or you could do it before every diaper change if that helps you remember it. I have a timer on my phone to give her Tylenol again at 8 p.m. So hopefully she recovers well. She was bleeding a little bit after the surgery, but it wasn't too bad. Um, I'm just really hoping that this helps our breastfeeding journey and then also helps her take a bottle i just really want her to be able to be fed by anyone and not just me and just kind of have a little more independence from her not that i'm like ditching her but just to be able to go out and know that anthony could feed her if i'm not home and so if this is the answer then this was totally worth it so yeah let me know down in the comments below if you've ever experienced any of this tongue tie lip tie cheek tie uh, i'm new to this whole world um of course i swear it's just one thing after another another it seems with avery she had the head ultrasound she had the heart condition now she's got the lip tie, tongue tie, cheek tie thing going on. So it just seems like it's one thing after another with her, which is weird because I hardly ever had anything with the boys. Grayson, I had absolutely nothing. Porter, we just had x-rays of his head one time because his head was forming weird, but now it's fine. And now Avery, it just seems like it's a lot. I don't know if like the more kids you have, like the more issues that pop up or just how she was i don't know it's just crazy because nobody saw these ties i mean we saw the lip tie but didn't think it was that big of a deal it just really hammers on the fact that you gotta go with your mom gut and if something isn't right and you want to get a second opinion about it go get a second opinion about it because you're probably right and it doesn't hurt just to try and see so I'm really happy that we did it and got it done. I'm exhausted because it was just a lot of waiting, a lot of just a whirlwind of a day. But I'm really hoping when Avery wakes up, we can nurse and get back on this journey, uh, this feeding journey together. I tried to nurse her after the procedure was over because I said that usually helps. But she like didn't know, well, I don't think she was really interested, but also didn't know how to latch. So I'm hoping like after she gets a little sleep and wakes up that she'll be able to figure it out. I don't know. I've never had a baby that like didn't know how to latch. Like my babies were really easy and they all just latched right away after I had them in the hospital. So I'm not sure how you teach a baby to latch if they don't know how to. I don't know. I guess that's what a lactation consultant does. So yeah, that's what I need to look up next. But yeah, I'm just hoping that this is the answer to the frustration we've been having with my pain in my breasts and then also just her refusing the bottle. I'm really hoping that this is the answer. So we will see.